some years ago, I took a psychological examination and it yielded an interesting result. It's something I never would have thought of and yet I already knew. What the heck am I talking about? <laughs> the test revealed Nicholas <laughs> has an excessive need for validation. It was a flag saying, hey, this guy has a problem. He needs to deal with this issue because he is not getting either the affirmation or the sense of self-worth or he's very insecure and it's keeping him from succeeding in the thing that he wants to do. And I'll add on in succeeding in the thing that God called me to do, which is writing blog posts and, and YouTube videos. <laughs> if you don't know, I'd like to welcome you to Christianity Explained, where we share biblical principles and ideas to help with a Christian walk. And it is those very principles that help me with doing just that, overcoming a strong sense of insecurity. Hmm. First, it will help to recognize that we develop these insecurities. You may be surprised to hear me talk about my suffering from insecurity insecurity. Where did it come from? <laughs> from what I've learned over the years, insecurity or val validation starts at home and sometimes a peer group. <laughs> I don't think my parents, in fact, I don't think most parents ever intentionally uh, try to create insecurity in, a, in their children. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of mine didn't. Unfortunately, my dad had a bit of a problem. I was technically, <laughs> my older brother actually had a different biological father. But so in my dad's eye, I was his firstborn. And it's a bit unnerving when that firstborn has serious disabilities. Heck, it also doesn't help that he may have I died early. <laughs> so for my dad, it was very rough. And he had trouble accepting me as I was, even though he loved me. Oh, believe me, if I was, came here and heard him from some idiot, my dad would what? Would pound that person's head to a wall. <laughs> That's my father, because he was a protector. I never doubted that. <laughs> I, but for some reason, I had a feeling that I was dis a disappointment, and I felt like, ugh, if only I could, but in reality, no. <laughs> that really can be a root, and I think my mom had other issues of her own. So let's get to the meat here. I know you did not come here to hear a, so, a soft story. <laughs> Rather, how I overcame an excessive need for validation or an excessive need to find affirmation security and not chase after it in all the wrong places, a la the old Tina Turner song. It all begins with forgiveness. I needed to forgive my parents, uh, whether they did anything wrong or not, I, th I inside needed to forgive, okay? That, that, that's just the starting point, not the whole thing. <laughs> Second, I needed to ease up on myself and stop believing the lies that I was clearly believing. Oh, you're a disappointment. Oh, you're a failure. Oh, you're... All that. I had to replace that garbage with truth. Truth of what God was actually saying in his word. And that's really an important step. 
I needed to choose to believe what God was saying in his words as opposed to what other people say. And the more I value what my father is saying about me and what he wanted me to hear and saying, you know what, I'm not going to worry. Great. There's another step that actually helped too. <laughs> People are always going to have an opinion about me regardless of what I do. <laughs> I could come up with a really nice graphic art design and that. And people will second guess me. Uh, how can a person with such vision problem do this? Oh no, you're not thinking realistically. I've got that one. <laughs> I've got other nonsense too. And I had it, so I guess you could say I have an inside advantage in learning to say, okay, people are going to have second guess, people are going to have opinions. I can't control what other people think or say. I can only control what I choose to believe. And therein lies the, the, um, the subtle point I wanted to make with that. I can only control what I choose to think. And I choose to believe what my father says. My father in heaven says in his words, Psalm 139, I am fearfully and wonderfully made in my mother's womb. God does have a plan and a purpose. And in my case, it was not to work in a sheltered work program and to be a throwaway type. That was not God's plan. Otherwise, he would have given me a spirit of contentment to be in a sheltered work program. And I wasn't content. I didn't belong. Hmm. Now, that's one. Two, he wouldn't have given me a desire to do videos like this where I'm sharing or writing stories on my blog site, Christianity Explained, if, if that wasn't the case. <laughs> he would not have used the things I've learned and the things that, that were shaped in me if he wanted some other thing. So, and yes, God was always for me. He had his hand on me since day one. I can actually say that <laughs> because it's because of his grace and his provision, I lived. <laughs> Technically, I should have died on, on the, uh, on the, died uh, shortly after I was born. I had a problem with the esophagus at the time. <laughs> uh, and I needed to learn to have confidence in the Holy Spirit, have a confidence that lets me walk out this journey of faith and to walk out learning how to trust my Father in heaven and trust Jesus to direct me and guide me as he said he would in his word. Am I going to be, oh, no. I managed to fall on my face. I managed to take, take left when I went right or go right when I should have went left. I'm not perfect. <laughs> but because I learned to keep going and to keep uh, moving forward in spite of the challenges, that has strengthened my heart and mind and determination. And I had to learn that, yes, yeah, I can count on him. And here's the other thing. The more rooted in my, in, that I have in the love of the Father, the more rooted in that love and what God says he's doing and what he's done for me, the less insecure I will grow, the less fearful of making mistakes, and the less fearful and anxious I become. <laughs> Doesn't mean I won't have problems. Yeah, I will. But I don't have to live in fear, and neither do you. I am going to be working on a written article with a lot better detail, more of a teaching. This is more of a word of encouragement to encourage you to look to God, get your sense of worth from Him, and not the uh, ever fickle, uh, changing attitude of other people. <laughs> All right. Hey, I want to thank you for your time. Hope you have a blessed day. 
Sí, de buenas y ya.